Okay, confession time here. I actually do know the outcome of this series. Normally, I don't like to cast things where I know what's gonna happen. But come on, it's the grand finals with Neeb and Scarlet. I can't pass this up. I don't know how many games it's gonna run and who's gonna do what builds. Though, unfortunately, I do now know that Neeb is gonna hatch block in game one. Don't ever change, Brotas. Don't ever change. So both these players have already won their ticket to DreamHack. They're playing for seeding and for an extra $3,000 to be added to their prizing. Scarlet's opening game one with Hatch first. She's trying for a natural, but there is a probe there. She's going to divert to the lateral third. But is it a trick? We've seen her double back sometimes. Gateway goes down for Neeb. It looks like he stopped calling himself Neeblet. I can never keep track. Okay, so it is going to be an unnatural natural for the Zerg. The most alien and horrific thing in all of StarCraft. Neeb takes his first gas at the usual timing. And his probe, who's acting like a real smarty pants, is going to be in position to witness Scarlet go extractor pool. Our Zerg player's national flag is red and white. But true fans know that it's really just Scarlet! Current world rank 34. It's Nexus before core, very standard opening against the Zerg. Just one more intro to sneak in if I may. Our Protoss player hails from a nation with certain unalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, because that's what everybody needs! Current world rank 24. There's that tech stashing pylon going down. Pool's gonna pop, that's gonna be followed by the hatch pop. And then we'll see what Scarlet has in mind. Looks like two queens, two links. Core is gonna complete for Neeb, let's get a look at his early battle plan. An adept with the immediate research of warp gates. No sign of chrono boost. And no tech choice yet either. He still needs some minerals. Scarlet has started Ling Speed, and she continues to drone. Oh, our map is Oxide, by the way. A smaller map, perfect for a game one. Oh, there's our tech. It's a Stargate for Neeb. Resolidified is the most popular choice in the current meta. When's the last time we saw Protoss open with a robo? Scarlet's gonna take her third, AKA her natural. And this is a little different. She's also getting a very early Baneling Nest. We'll have to see if this is one of those safety nests you hear about or if she's got plans to get aggressive. I mean, they're not great against Stargate units, but they're decent enough against the Depths. Neeb's gonna add his second gate to complete his wall. Oh, and Scarlet ordered a dozen Lings there. We could indeed be seeing some early game Zerg aggression coming out of Scarlet. She might be hoping to catch Neeb by surprise here. Stargate's gonna finish. Is Neeb gonna get the Void Ray? Yes, he is. It's rallied at Scarlet's Overlord. She's already got her Overlord on the move. I like that. She knows the timing and doesn't intend to stick around. Neeb actually spotted the direction the Overlord left, and he's trying to adjust his rally point. We've got some Ninja Lings sneaking down towards the Protoss Third. Oh, this is gonna be a Baneling bus, people. Scarlet's gonna try to blow open the front gate and get her Lings inside. Banelings do 80 damage to structure. That's quintuple damage. Oh, and it's coming right, right now. Oh, early detonation, that's a miss. Scarlet was hoping to see a pylon in that wall, but it's all gateways. She pulled her Banelings back, now she's gonna bring them in again. Banelings trying to get in range, boom! Oh, the core and the gate have survived. But they're deep in the red now. Force field's gonna protect that cyber core. But something's gotta give in. It's the gateway. Ling's inside, but the probes are there. They outnumber the Ling pretty badly. Neeb's committing to a second layer behind the cyber core. He rewalled. Neeb has held. Scarlet's gonna need to transition now. Or she could strike that GG key and look for the next game. Well, that is definitely one way to start a series, people. Let me just quickly explain why Neeb is now up two to zero. Because of the particular tournament format used in DreamHack, Neeb is coming in from the upper bracket, aka the winner's bracket. Scarlet, however, is coming in from the lower bracket, aka the loser's bracket. Neeb is undefeated, Scarlet is not. And in fact, it was Neeb that knocked Scarlet into the lower bracket. 
So imagine a scenario where Scarlet wins the matchup we're watching now. Neeb and Scarlet would be one and one in matches, yet Scarlet wins the tournament. You can even game out a scenario in which Neeb wins more maps than Scarlet in their battles, yet still manages to lose the tournament. To correct for this problem, in this scenario, the tournament organizers spot Neeb one game. It's weird, I know, but it's what they do in order to preserve the coolness of the upper and lower bracket format. If you don't want to lose one series in your out type system, instead want an upper and lower bracket system so players can fight their way back in, this is what you get. There needs to be an incentive for a player to not throw a series in order to move into the lower bracket on purpose. So the end result, Neeb is now two games to zero and only needs two more wins to become North America's champion. Scarlet needs four. Now, as for this game, Neeb certainly earned the win. He does a ton of impressive things in a very short period of time. Somehow, somehow, he detects or suspects the Baneling bust and adds a third gateway to his wall. That's a big deal. Now, he never got vision of the Baneling nest the entire game, nor did Neeb see the Banelings morphing. Somehow he guessed Scarlet's stratagem based on what clues though, I don't really know. His adept perhaps didn't like the number of Zerglings he spotted when touring the Zerg third base, or perhaps he saw a similarity to another game he had experienced against Scarlet or another Zerg player. It was something that was transacting on a higher level than I can appreciate. But the point is, Neeb sees it and he adds the third gate, so there's no hole in his wall manned only by a door guard anymore. The Banelings can't just kill the door guard and then cruise inside to the pylon for the easy powering down of a ton of Protoss structures. But there's more. When the Banelings come, Neeb slides his adept to the side and dodges the burst, which looks like it triggers early and the buildings don't take enough damage. Now the Lings have to deal with the door guard instead of tearing down the remaining shred of buildings, and by the time the hole is finally made there, Scarlet really no longer has enough units left for a victory. Now if you look at the cost of Banelings versus the cost of buildings, it's actually a net loss to the Zerg to destroy a building based on its replacement value. That's why some people say it's cost ineffective as a tactic, but if the building is the only thing preventing Zerglings from ravaging your workers, well, that gateway is worth tactically more than 150 minerals. And that's why the Baneling bus works. It's not that it takes out buildings, it's that it takes out critical buildings. Also, kudos to Neeb for saving his core with the Sentry Force Field. That was very clutch. But enough of that, let's get to game two, or, or do we call it game three? Adjutant, if you would please. The game begins now. Game two, and the pressure's already on Scarlet. If she loses one more, she's officially on the ropes. And that did not take long. Which is a bit surprising, because these two are known for having some epic mine-out map scenario games. Split map, full tech tree, spore forest type stuff. But maybe today we'll just get four or five quick games of Baneling Bus. The world's highest paid actress is Ingrid Johansson, but we know her by her first name, and that is Scarlet! <laughs> Neeb has sent out another hatch blocking probe, by the way. His probe will arrive before Scarlet has the minerals. Scarlet's going for the triangular third as a consolation prize. No, look, she started up a spawning pool. Neeb doesn't know. He's hanging around the natural, trying to ensure he has the hatch block. I think he thinks Scarlet's trying to sneak back in. Oh, that's really cool. He needs to know that there's a spawning pool coming. Scarlet looks like she's delayed, but she doesn't actually have the 300 minerals. Then Neeb departs just as she gets them. That is perfect for Scarlet. Don't get me wrong, I don't think that actually hurts Neeb, but that was really cool. Though, so, I guess it does hurt him if Scarlet makes a whole bunch of lings and it does damage. She's getting an extractor. Neeb's gonna go ahead and make that nexus anyway. Pool's gonna complete. Is Scarlet gonna get aggressive with it? Four lings. I don't think that's aggressive. What is it, semi-aggressive? 
I hate you a little, but not a lot. Neeb puts down his core, and I am glad because that's something that every Protoss is going to Neeb! The Lings are out on the map. Neeb sees them. He doesn't have a wall at this point, though. I like this. Scarlet ignores the probe. Don't take the bait. Neeb has to respond by chrono boosting that zealot. It's rallied to become a door guard. But unless that zealot is sumo sized, it's not gonna work. Neeb's wall was absolutely perfect in game one. Here comes the probe. He's cutting it a little bit close. He gets the minerals for a second gate. He puts it down. I don't know if that was down to the last millisecond, but there wasn't a lot of time to breathe there. Scarlet's four-ling incursion is rebuffed. She starts up ling speed. Neve's moved on to chrono boosting an adept, and he's getting himself a stargate. He repeats his tech choice from game one. Neeb retakes map control as his adept pours out onto the map. Scarlet has recalled her lings to help deal with this. The adept is slightly delayed though, so there should be more queens than usual. We'll see how it plays out. Neeb is so good at this. He takes a pot shot at a ling and sends in the shade. That's a first blood. And he lets the shade complete. He goes right into the main. Scarlet has a queen there, but is it enough firepower to shut down the adept before it gets the drones? There's the spore save. But Scarlet brings an injured drone back too soon. The adept gets a kill and the shade away. Not a terrible shift for an adept that arrived late to work. Neve is following up with a Void Ray. Just like Game 1, he's also now starting up Warp Gate Research. Ling Speed, finishing up for our Zerg player. Neve's second Adept links up with the first. Double your pleasure, double your fun. Two Adepts kill more than just one. Meanwhile, the Void Ray is finishing. There's the Shade. Is this just for scouting or is it for real? There's barely any Lings to pick up the Shade. Neve's gonna let it finish and he's gonna start killing. He's gonna try to trade out four drones and Scarlet gets both adepts. Pretty even for a second, it looked like it was gonna be a lot worse for the Zerg. Scarlet gets supply blocked as the Void Ray kills the Perching Overlord. She responds by making four more Overlords. I think she's making space for roaches. Although, more typically to do that, one actually requires a roach warrant. An Oracle follows the Void Ray and Neeb's making two more adepts. A second oracle is being made behind the first. Neeb sends out a probe. He's eyeing a third base. Scarlet has some lings on it, though. Oracle with the save. The oracle loses its supply value for the harass, but the third will get down. Void Ray sneaks into the main and snags a creep tumor before a pair of queens force it out. Clearly, the guest list was devoid of his name. Scarlet's third is up and running, almost fully saturated. Neeb is gonna start a robo. Void Ray slays another tumor. That dude's got a backup career as a radiation therapist. There's that robo. Oh, it has been ages since I've been able to catch a warp gate opening ceremony. There it is, people. A thing of beauty. Remember, when you create your RTS, it's important to borrow liberally from as many movie franchises as possible. Oracle died, pulsar beams are active. The drone pull is inadequate. Three drones are killed. Can he get a force? He does. And both oracles get away. He trades hit points for drones. Always an excellent trade. The oracles also got the scout on the Roachborn. And now that Void Ray is positioning itself to keep an eye out for approaching Ravagers. Scarlet is indeed filling up her supply with roaches. She has not entirely stopped droning though. Neeb's getting himself an immortal. He knows he's gonna need an armor puncher. It's a queen walk. The Void Ray has spotted it. I guess the queen's profile on eHarmony is true after all. She does like long walks on the beach. But she is bringing all her girlfriends with her. Yes, that is all seven of her queens. Neeb is asking himself, just how many shield batteries can I fit on the light shade high ground? He's only got one void rate, but he does have one immortal now. He starts up a second. Ravager's being made on Neeb's doorstep. Scarlet's making 20 speedlings for her follow-up. The shield batteries are gonna finish. That's big. Sentry Force Field buying even more time for Neeb. 
But the corrosive vials cut that short. Scarlet's army is almost twice the size of Neve's, but that does not factor in all those field batteries. The Lings are joining in. There's 32 of them. Scarlet's queens are transfusing the Ravagers. Neve is pulling back. Is Scarlet going for the third of the natural? Maybe for now, just the batteries. And they are dropping fast. Kotas in retreat. Neve is warping in stalkers. Battery overcharge, active from the third. Scarlet sees it and pulls back. No, Zerg is surging forward. The Biles take out the overcharged battery. Neve is forced way out of position. The natural is exposed as well now. More links streaming in. Neve is showing cracks. The huge number of Biles are making it look like a New Year's celebration. The last shield battery is gone, and so is the Void Ray. There's no air left for Protoss. Neve is trying to make a third immortal. Scarlet is continuing the Ling production, but she is actually making a lair behind this. Probes get pulled to attack, but they only stream to their death. The Nexus is under fire. Neve is going to recall. He knows his army's been cut off. He saves it, brings it to his main. He sacks his third to see if he can hold it as natural. We're going to get a laser light show. No, 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 we're not. Scarlet punks the caster. She lets the Nexus live. An empty Nexus is no longer a priority. Scarlet is going at the wall. She couldn't break it in game one, but this time she's got some serious tech. Oh, Neve is actually starting a dark shrine in a warp prism. He's looking to generate a surprise, but he has to survive first. His wall is crumbling. If he gets his immortals in range, he's exposed to the vials. He has to pop his units forward and back. The links can't help until that wall falls. Though there's not too much left of it. The queens are going home. Scarlet is going to transition. She's droning now. She decides she's done enough damage. She doesn't need to risk her army against those immortals. But that does mean Neve's going to live long enough to get his dark shrine up. Oh, I think the Ling saw the warp prism. It looks like that's huge. Scarlet has a lair now. If she puts two and two together, she could get an overseer. She does not have one. Shrine is about to complete. Neeb is attempting the win behind Dark Shrine. He's down almost 20 workers. Both players are at zero upgrades looking to get their plus one. Scarlet spots Neeb's main army looking to push in. Oh, Scarlet got an overseer. But Scarlet doesn't see it. The Ravagers are going right by. No, she spots them. The Queens are protecting the fourth and Neeb GG's. I'd say Scarlet ties it up, but with his bonus win, Neeb is still ahead. I know, I know, we should get to the next game, but I can't help myself. I got stuff I gotta say. Okay, Scarlet storms back, winning the second game with a queen walk Ravager timing. That might have been her plan from the opening tip, but I think she identified that Neeb was making oracles in his Stargate instead of Void Rays and saw an opportunity. Sure, Neeb kills some drones with those oracles, but the oracles don't help that much once the queens come and knock it. But if you'll forgive me, the coolest thing to happen in this game, for me, was actually the mind game towards the end of the opening minute. The smaller an edge in a game of StarCraft, the more I tend to geek over it. And no way am I suggesting the game turned on this, but it was so cool. This was a total, but do you know that I know that you know that I know type moment. These are some serious mind games. Let me walk us through it. We'll start with what I'll call the level one thinking. At level one, Neeb decides to hatch block. As much as it annoys me, this is good for Protoss. It forces the Zerg to start with their two bases further apart, which makes them harder to defend because the queens are so slow to move in between the bases. It particularly matters if the Protoss player is going for a resonating glaive rush and they can shade in between the Zerg hatcheries so very quickly. Level two. Scarlet is one of the few Zerg players who tries to counter this by pretending to concede her natural by faking a move towards one of her third base options. And then, as soon as the probe scoots up to the main thinking its job is done, Scarlet's drone doubles back to take her natural to put down that hatchery. I love it. Level 3. Neeb knows Scarlet does this, and he's too clever to fall for it. He leaves his probe hanging around extra long until he's sure Scarlet took that unnatural natural. He gives her a choice. Either Scarlet is forced to suck it up and take an unnatural natural, or she burns a ton of time with no second hatchery at all, eventually taking one so late it's punitive. Level 4. 
Scarlet knows that Neeb knows she's trying to double back. So instead, she spends her money on a pool in her main. Neeb can't see that spawning pool. His probe is camping the empty natural. So he doesn't know that Scarlet's drone doesn't have the money to put down a hatch anyways. When he finally goes up to the main, he sees the pool, he sees he's been hoodwinked, and Scarlet glides in to take her natural just as she gets the 300 minerals she needs. No time lost. How big a difference does this really make? Probably not a lot. Neeb still gets his build off all the same. He now faces the risk of early ling pressure, so he has to make a zealot. Scarlet only makes the four lings she would normally make anyways, so Neeb pretty much loses 100 minerals and his adept comes out later than it should. But hey, a zealot is always good for something, at least soaking hits if nothing else. Scarlet, for all her cleverness, still winds up with a delayed hatchery, and she doesn't really use her early pool in any significant way. So, the real winner, of course, is me, who is entertained in a bizarre, nerdly way, and the game goes on from there. Scarlet probably wins this game because her biles were just perfect and Neve didn't have enough void rays to defend. It really didn't have anything to do with this whole mind game that happens in the opening minute. But darn it, that was neat to watch. Let us see if this series will yield a third good game. Adjutant, if you would, please. The game begins now. Marvel's Uta the Watcher asks the question, what if... Neeb and Scarlet played on the map Romanticide. As long as it results in a cameo by Robert Downey Jr., I am down with it. Annie Hughes Scarlet now has an opportunity to tie this series up, even though in spirit the two are actually tied. Neeb is gonna hatch block again. We'll see what kind of mind games get played this time around. You gotta think this time around Neeb's gonna be ready for everything. Overlord number two hatches. Number one is already making its way over to Neeb's base. Probe comes down to plant that initial gateway. But what is going to happen with Scarlet's hatch? There's the block. There's the reroute. Neeb sticking around. And I think Scarlet's just going to put it down. This time around, she'll just concede it. She'll take the unnatural natural. Can't fool the Protoss every game. Neeb's probe's gonna scoot up to the main and make sure that Scarlet hasn't put down that spawning pool already. She has not. Instead, the extractor pool is just coming now right at the ordinary expected time. Our Protoss player is one of only 10 players in the entire world to ever win the Triple Crown of StarCraft. He is Neeb! To get the Triple Crown, you have to win a premier tournament in Europe, North America, and Korea. Neeb and Saril are the only non-Koreans to ever pull that off. Our Zerg player is the first and only person to ever win a tournament sponsored by the International Olympic Committee. She is Scarlet! That was during the Winter Olympics in 2018. Seems like a lifetime ago now. Neeb went Nexus before Core. That's just his tech stashing pylon there. Scarlet's spawning pool and her unnatural natural are about to complete. We'll see what she has in mind. Two queens, two lings, and her overlord's gonna show up to see what Neeb's gonna do once his core finishes. That's happening right about now. He starts up an adept, no chrono boost, no warp gate research. No tech choice either, though I assume he's banking money for one. Not sure what happened with Neeb's start. Maybe he was down a probe on gas. Scarlet's already started up ling speed. Okay, Neeb starts his warp gate research, and there is his stargate. He is back on track. His adept is popping out right now. Meanwhile, Scarlet's going to take her third at her natural. It ain't right, but this is the world I must live in. It is my burden to bear, but you must shoulder it with me. The Adept is going to make a foray out onto the map. It's safe enough. Scarlet has almost no map presence right now. Oh, and Neeb is actually bringing his Adept around the backside. I don't see this done too often, but it makes perfect sense. It's probably the same distance to Scarlet's second base. 
She does have an overlord in position to spot it coming in. She's hustling her queen over to pick up that shade. Neve lets it complete. Shots are fired, but there's no first blood. Neeb rifles off the escape shade and then uses his adept to scout the main. But he barely gets up the ramp before he meets a queen. Shade completes, the adept escapes. Both our players are still perfectly intact. A void ray is coming out of that stargate, it's rallied towards the overlord. Second adept is being made, which is helpful because Scarlet's pushing her lings up the map. Scarlet's got her ling foray timed out to coincide with the usual Protoss attempt to put down a third base. Void Raid goes at the Overlord. Lings go at the probe. Adepts go at the lings. Who got the first blood there? Looks like the Overlord died first. Briefly supply capping Scarlet. But the replacement Overlord has already been hashed. Adepts chasing the lings back to the Zerg base. Oh, Neeb has started a second Stargate, and he's moving out with his existing Void Ray to join the Adepts. Scarlet's adding Lings and Queens. Both our players over 40 workers apiece with minimal armies right now. Neeb shades up the ramp right into the heart of Zerg territory. He lets it complete. He's trading for drones like baseball cards. What can he get for a pitcher and a third baseman to be named later? Scarlet's gonna clean it up. And the price tag is going to be two drones and three more lings. Scarlet also scouts the Protoss third with a single ling, but the Adept is going to kill that. But the real story is that Neeb's Oracle picked up a couple more drone kills. Double Void Rays. If I didn't know better, I'd think that Neeb was trying to trick Scarlet. He wants her to think she can get away with another Queen Walk. He's showing Oracles, but he's massing Void Rays. Scarlet, though, is going for her lair. And she's adding spores. A quick ling run by, gonna see what she can pick up for probes. I like this for Neve. He's really trying to make it look like he's running the same strategy as he did in game two. But if Scarlet's paying close attention, she'll see that that oracle is the same one each time. There's not two this time. Oh, those main arting drones need to be careful. Nope, apparently they don't. I'm just an alarmist. That oracle is bugging out. More ling harassment at the Protoss third. The shield battery is done though, and that makes it hard for the Lynx to get anything done. Oh, but they might be able to pick up some surprise kills on Adepts warping in. Or not. I think like I might be 0 for 7 at this point. And now Neve has revealed his Void Rays. He forces the cancel on the Zerg 4th and he gets the drone. Scarlet has 7 Queens. If she groups them together, she could be okay here. But if divided, they could get overpowered and picked off. Interestingly, Neeb is not making more Void Rays behind this. It could be like a double fake. He's going for a Robo Zealot Leg Speed Upgrade and plus one Ground Attack. Watch me be wrong for the second time, but I think he's trying to bait out the Queen Walk. And then he crushes it with a Ground Force that is fully operational. Yeah, look at this. The Stargates are empty and Gateways are filling up the main. But the question is, what is Scarlet doing? And that is unclear. She got herself an infestation pit. And now she's going up to Hive Tech. Roach speed and Overlord speed. Does that mean she's taking the bait and going for Ravagers? Can't tell. Neeb's also getting a battle duck. I guess he just wants me to love him even more. There's that plus one ranged attack for the Roaches. There's that Hive in a second Evo chamber. She is getting infestors, but mostly she's just droning. Which, if Neeb really is trying to suck her into some kind of trap, is exactly what she needs to be doing. Just ignore them and make drones. Those Zergs already made it to 78 drones. How many more do they need? And how many more gateways did Neeb need? By my count, that'll take him up to 8. That's not too insane. I'm starting to think we might be getting the big mega game that Neeb and Scarlet are famous for. Both of these players can be very patient when they want to be. Void Ray's making a play for that fourth, but there's too many queens there. Eleven queens to five Void Rays. Good luck with that. Scarlet starts a spire. Neeb is finishing up his Robo Bay. Scarlet taking a northeastern expansion. It has no defense. He's trying to get that one up on the quiet. Neeb's going for his fourth. Scarlet finds it. Looks to shut it down with Zerglings. Calvary arrives. Are they too late? There's not a lot of hit points on that thing. Neeb with the save. Neeb's making Archons now. 
And he's upgrading his air. I think he realizes the queen walk isn't coming and he's preparing for the late game. Looks like he might even send his ground forces out and see if he can kill the queens on their own turf. Scarlet's queen force does not have a lot of support. I am out of date. They are roach assisted. Scarlet is ahead of me and has already made the correction. And as Neeb pulls back, those roaches are going to try to morph into ravagers. Meanwhile, Baneling Nest is going to pop for Scarlet, as is the Spire. And her expansion's just about ready to finish as well. Scarlet is definitely outmining Neeb at this point. She's got 10 extra workers and is beating them on minerals and on gas. Scarlet killing a stasis ward without detection. That is boss. She must have caught the oracle making it. That was a pretty sick maneuver with her corrosive vials. And now she's making me look pretty foolish because now she's queen walking. This is total punk the caster day. I still think this is what Neve wants. He doesn't have a lot of defense, but he's got a ground army that can really punish this. Watch this. He's making disruptors and he's making shield batteries. Exactly what he needs. And he's gone up to 10 gates. Scarlet sees it. She's aborting. She's pulling back everything. I think this is the right call. That could have been disastrous. But now Neeb has an opportunity to try to harass the retreat. And where do we transition from here? I think both our players are going to max out now. Scarlet's actually getting a second spire. Her first one's turning into a greater spire. Call her an Avenger, because she's getting ready for endgame. She has at this point max. And as part of that, she's getting Banelings with Baneling speed. And I think the reason for that is as this game continues, we're going to see the infamous Neeb lots. Zealots that act like Zerglings doing runbys. Neeb is notorious for it, and Banelings are one way you can shut it down. Not a very cost-effective way, but a fast way to shut it down. And Scarlet is ahead of me again. I was about to say, and spine crawlers to protect her hatcheries, and she's already working on those. It's gonna be forest time. First the spine crawlers, then the spores. Neeb is also maxed. He's picking up a fifth base, researching that storm. And that's thematically appropriate because we are literally in the calm before the storm here. Oh, and as soon as I say that, it looks like we have our first wave of Neblots running off here. They're looking to hit the bottom of the map. Scarlet is starting the Corruptors. You can tell she wants to make more, but she doesn't have the supply. She needs units to die first, so in the meantime, she's building a bank. Oh, Neeb might be looking to solve that little supply problem for her. And it looks like there were just barely enough spine crawlers to deal with those knee blocks. Scarlet's actually got 96 drones. And you can bet a bunch of them are slated to become part of her forest. Neeb's gonna finish his fleet beacon, and he's adding that third Stargate. I don't think he means to go pure golden armada here. He's gonna make himself a 3D death ball. Air and land with storm. Scarlet is weathering the attacks, building her bank, pushing out her creep. At the same time, she's got to tighten up the hatches and deal with all these knee blocks. Yeah, when all else fails, hit them with the Banelings. Believe it or not, Zealots are light type, which is what Banelings do extra damage against. After those Banelings detonate, Scarlet has room to make eight more Corruptors. She's also getting an Ultralisk Cavern. I mean, what do you get the Zerg who has everything? If you listen carefully, you can actually hear the players trying to think their way through this. It's very difficult for either player to attack into the other. But Nii's 3D ball looks really sexy. Archon Immortal backed by Void Ray with Disruptors in the mix. Other than Queens, everything Scarlet has dies to a one-shot from a Nova Blast. It's forcing Scarlet back and Neeb is securing the high ground. That means the hatchery's gonna belong to him. It's a horror pinata. Scarlet's getting to work on her solution. She's morphing broodlords, but they are a ways away. The storms and feedbacks are just punishing her army. But Scarlet does have a counterattack. She's using roaches. If I call Neeb zealots Neeb lots, I guess I should call these scroaches. Never mind that, because the broodlords are here. If Neeb can punch his way through this, he might have this game. But the last Void Ray is gone. Everything's on the ground, and that makes it Broodlord accessible. Immortals do not like Broodlings. The Scroaches think about cutting off the Immortal Archon's retreat, but they will regret that if they do. Scarlet's gonna rebuild that hatch. Now it's for Neeb to react to the Broodlords, and he's gonna try to do it with Void Rays. He's adding in that all-important plus two air attack, finishing off his plus three ground attack. 
both players have had to lay waste to their banks, trying to rebuild their armies. Oh, Neeb's gonna make me happy, and he's gonna add flux veins. The speed and acceleration upgrade for those void rays. Scarlet's also expanding. She's taken that bottom center location. If we're gonna get into a split map scenario though, the real question is who's gonna take those corners? Neither player has been brave enough to attempt it as of yet. Ah, uh, here's a bit of a change up. Neeb is adding in Tempest now. That's gonna give his 3D death ball some additional range. Great against spores, but also useful against Broodlord. Don't people find the slaughter of defenseless changelings inhumane? Maybe they need a society dedicated to their preservation. There's the crackling upgrade for Scarlet, but particularly interesting is that she's loading up on Vipers. Okay, break time's over. The Neblots are on the march again. Flux Veins finishes Tempest's almost done. Neeb appears to have formulated his plan. He's moving to put it into action. He's cutting towards the top right. Oh, his forge is chrono boosting shield research. Scarlet is basically researching everything, including Neural Parasite. Neeb's added a shiny new observer to his death ball, so he's able to pick off all those creep tumors on his way in here. But the forest is looking rather thick in this neck of the woods, so he's forced to pull back. But the Neblots have found an unprotected hatch. It's a horror pinata, and that is a nice pickup for Protoss. The escaping drones are all glowing purple because they've made off with rich gas from the rich gas geyser. Look at the impertinence of these Neblots. They're going right to the natural. Scarlet is gonna kill every one of them, but are they gonna get that hatch? Yes, they are. Cover your children's eyes. No one should have to see that. Scarlet's so fast, she's rebuilding that hatch well before the death animation is even completed. But it's Neeb who's picking up the victories here, and he's expanding behind this. Ten bucks says this Adept Shade completes. Come on. Oh, thank God, I can't afford to pay y'all ten bucks. Okay, so I was right one time during this game. Those drones are really glowing purple. Somebody should study the long-term effects of carrying that kind of gas. I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to dispense some medical advice, people. If just touching it makes you glow bright purple, there's probably a side effect. Scarlet scrooches find the expansion. She's got an opportunity to shut this down. Why do I get the feeling that coining the word scrooches is going to be on my list of life regrets? Yeah, I changed my mind. I totally didn't come up with that. You heard it on some other cast. Okay, Neeb is a bit slow to react, but he's finally getting over here to save that Nexus. In fairness, he has been kind of busy. The Archons just slay the Scroaches. Oh, and look at the confidence. He brought over probes to mine from the Nexus even before he saved it. Big time forest sprouting up at the Rich Gas Geyser location. And a huge wave of expensive upgrades completing for Scarlet. Both our players are maxed again. They're trying to game out some kind of scenario to win this thing. I just love these moments in the game where the players are all thinking so hard. What is my win scenario here? Neeb picked up Shadow Stride. Those Dark Templar are so stealthy I didn't even notice that Neeb built a Dark Shrine. No sign of him using it though. Right now Neeb is focused on trying to reinforce his newly minted expansion. Neeb is actually out mining Scarlet right now. He's got the more impressive bank as well. But the reason that Scarlet's not maxed is she keeps converting some of her drones into more forest. Scarlet is an eco-warrior. Since the earliest days of StarCraft II, this has been one of the Zerg advantages. How to beat that 200 supply. Oh, the Cracklings with a nice pickup. Scarlet going for plus three, plus three for her flyers. Notice that Neeb has skipped the armor upgrades. I'm interested in the math and the thinking on that. Ah, uh, the Tempests are bombarding the forest from range. They need the Tectonic Destabilizer upgrade. Oh, as soon as I say that, Neeb starts it up. He's ahead of me as usual. It's almost as though, as though he were a professional who played this game before. Oh, Scarlet with a miss on an abduct. She wanted a Tempest and she got an Archon by accident. Her Corruptors can't kill an Archon, they can only get hurt by one. So Neeb's kind of got two armies. He's got this main force with his heir. And then he's got a ground force with his immortals. Scarlet continuing to add on those spores. But I am concerned that the tectonics of her forest are about to be destabilized. And nobody, nobody likes tectonics that have been destabilized. Trust me, it can ruin your whole day. Okay, so Neeb's immortal force, as I'm calling it, is pushing out. 
Oh, and just to prove me wrong, he's researching his armor upgrades after all. He just prioritizes them last, it would seem. And wow, 18 minutes in and a ZVP and we're nowhere near the Crimson Zone. This has really been a thinking gamers game, low on casualties. Lots of thoughtful pauses, but I've still quite enjoyed it. You get those games where nothing's happening, but you also get those games where nothing's happening in terms of combat, but there's so much happening behind the scenes. These guys just keep changing their compositions to react to one another. Scarlet's dispatching her broodlords to deal with that immortal force, but that means they're not gonna be available to deal with Neeb's main force. And remember, his main force has Archons too. Oh, the Tempest Silver Blasts have turned orange. That means Tectonic Stabilizers is done. Oh, I love this. Need just made some extra Oracle to grant vision to his Tempest. Those little triangles is the spell Revelation that comes from the Oracle. It grants Need vision of that area. The Tempest Air Attack can shoot out 14 matrices, one of the biggest ranges in the game, but it's limited by the Tempest Sight of 12. So this little stunt expands it up to 14. So far, it's let him push the Corruptors back. And the poor Spores only have a range of 7, so you can see how they can really get brutalized by this. If Scarlet's gonna fight back against this, she's gonna need her Vipers and her Infestors to do the heavy lifting. It's actually rather close on the resources lost tab. Typically, a tie is a pretty healthy sign for Zerg. There's the Abducts on the Tempest, that's what Zerg wants. Fungal growth on Neeb's army, followed by Broodlings. Scarlet has pushed Neeb back to his array of shield batteries, but Neeb has set up this forward array of batteries for exactly this situation. Can the Corruptors really fight the Void Rays on top of those shields? Aw, Speedlings with Revelation cast on them, it's like a festival of lights. So the answer to my question is yes. Yes, the Corruptors can because the Broodlords are gonna annihilate said shields. But meanwhile, Team Immortal is striking into the heart of Zerg territory. Neeb Remax is making five Tempests. Both players with huge banks, but how can they last with this level of confrontation? Team Immortal is just getting free kills. Neeb keeps falling back to his mothership. The Broodlings are ineffective against that cloak. Abducts on the Tempest. Scarlet is bringing up her queens. It is a queen walk. It's the 20 minute queen walk. And the Broodlings are gonna give us a laser light show on the fourth. Oh, this is Led Zeppelin quality. I have no idea why, I just felt like saying that. Meanwhile, Team Immortal gets the revenge base kill. Neeb has the bigger army, but mostly because he's sacrificed more probes. His fresh Tempests are out and he's about to catch Scarlet's Vipers doing the nasty. No, he pulls back. Nobody likes to be shot while they're consuming their own hatchery. It's just embarrassing. Scarlet tries to deal with Team Immortal, but the storms take her counterforce down. Spine crawlers are armored, so those Immortals do so much damage against them. It was only a year ago that Immortals were largely considered to be obsolete, late game PBZ, and now they're essential. Eve ignores the spores and starts going after the drones. Tons of kills adding up. Oh, big battle! This is the clash, but it's Scarlet Supply that's dropping. She gets the mothership. Neeb is pulling back, but Scarlet is badly hurt. Zerg remakes six corruptors and pushes ahead. Fungal's on the Tempest, but the shield batteries are there. Feedback and storms on the infestors in retaliation. The photon cannons are a factor. There's only two broodlords left to deal with them. Scarlet is remaking corruptors, but Neeb is remaking void rays. Scarlet's trying to grind down the Golden Armada, but the Photons and Shield Batteries are making it a tall order. A grande low-fat double whip order. The Corruptors are getting decimated. Zerg supply is falling. Neeb is dumping his bank to make Void Rays seven at a time. Scarlet's fresh Corruptors have hatched. Team Immortal continues to do damage. Scarlet invests a fortune trying to convert her Corruptors into Broodlords, nine of them. Neeb wants to summon another mothership. That's gonna max him, there's a huge supply disparity. And now Team Immortal's pushing into the natural. He's gonna get his hands on the tech. Scarlet's got a new army morphing, but it has to get here and it has to group together. Neeb is striking while the iron is hot and that will get him victory. Game three goes to Neeb in a massive complex battle. If you didn't burn at least a few brain calories watching that, you weren't watching the same game I was. 
Okay, so it's unusual to see a Zerg throw in the towel with a 4,000 mineral bank. But once the Protoss is on top of your tech like that with a maxed out army, there's not that much that you can do. It was a good game. Scarlet is now officially on the ropes. Neeb only needs one more win to seal the North American Championship. And technically, he even has two games he can afford to give here. Let's see what he does with this luxury environment. Does he sit back and let the game come to him? Or does he go for the throat? Adjutant, if you would please. The game begins now. We really gotta stop meeting like this. Jaganatha of all places. I have witnessed Scarlet and Neeb annihilate their opponents on this map. Let's see how this plays out. Scarlet's back is against the wall. It is death's door time. One more loss and she is done. Oh, and Neeb's gonna give her the professional courtesy of not hatch blocking. He's going for the extra minerals, no scout. Though he may very well just scout after he puts down his gateway. In my day, that's how the Protoss used to do it. We did a gate and go and we liked it. It was good enough for our fathers and it was good enough for us. Let's see. Yes, Neeb's doing it. That's because he's a real man, putting hair on his chest. Or on his weird psychic Protoss braid things. Scarlet takes her natural at the natural time. Just one more game. It's all the Protoss Neebs! I'm just thinking about how many games Neeb has had to fight through and he just needs one more to finish it off. Scout arrives. The probe sees the hatch timing. It's also going to see the extractor pool. And that's going to give him the all clear to do the same Nexus core he's been doing all series long. Which reminds me to sneak in one more intro. The Rolling Stones released a previously unheard track in 2020 from the album Goat's Head Soup. The Stones teamed up with guitarist Jimmy Page to bring us Scarlet! I figure when you wait 50 years to release a song, it's either really good or really bad. Either way, that makes me want to hear it. Protoss grabs that second gas, which means we're gonna witness a hatch pop. Scarlet's been going light on Lings all series long. This doesn't strike me as a situation in which she'd change it up. Not at all. Two queens, two Lings. Core is gonna complete, and we'll see if Neeb intends to deviate from that Stargate opening. Nope, his cyber core is gonna contain six bongo drums as always. I assume that's what those circles are. Okay, the Overlord's gonna witness a Chrono Boosted Adept, Warp Gate starting up right away, delayed tech choice. He's presumably still collecting the 150 gas he needs for that Stargate. Robo and Twilight only need 100 gas, just saying there, Need. No, he's sticking with what's working for him. He's getting another Stargate. Perhaps he'll experiment once more with the mix of Void Ray Oracle that he's been bringing. Scarlet going for the three under three. That third base is well under three minutes. Ling's speed is about a third of the way done, and the first adept is on the map. Neeb's first adept is hanging back before scouting. She wanted to make sure that her twin sister was available to guard that door. Well, that was my assumption, but they both seem to be heading out. Scarlet's slow oracle is going to duck in and try to get a look at that tech choice. She is going to spot the Stargate. And now that poor Overlord needs to think about trying to escape in slow motion. Shade is a fake. Neeb had me on that one, but he is headed home. Overlord sticks around long enough to see that it's a void ray getting made. And now he's going to try to escape at his top speed. I have nightmares like this. You know the one where you're trying to get away, but you're running in slow motion? That's exactly what a scouting Overlord's life is like. No! Oh, Scarlet thinks she knows Neeb's third base timing. She's sending up Lings to try to disrupt. And she's not wrong. Neeb is thinking about exactly that. His probe does have two adept bodyguards. Is that enough? The pylon's gonna give the Lings very little surface area to work with. Scarlet pulls back, but not before Neeb's adepts kill two Lings and secure the first blood. OMG, the Void Ray has no kills. Did the Overlord get away somehow? It did. 
How did Scarlet manage that? Go Overlord! Oh no. Never mind, it was all in vain. At least it's a good death animation. Oh, we got the one where the top of the head pops off. I love that one. Yes, I know, there's something very wrong with me. Speaking of wrong, Neeb is making a twilight in a couple of gates. This could just be Neeb filling out his tech tree. But this could also be the move we see Showtime do, where he makes a Stargate to get the Zerg all worked up, and then he switches to Resonating Glaives. We got an Oracle dive coming in here. It's gonna get the scout on Scarlet's Roach Warren, but it will be driven out by the Queen. Neeb's trying to thread the needle here, but he's just taking Queen hits. If it is a Glaive timing, Scarlet's doing exactly the right thing, getting that early Roach Warren. Maybe Neeb won't do it now because he saw the Roach Warren. Nope, no, he is. He's researching Resonating Glaives. The Oracle and the Void Ray are trying to make it look like it's a Stargate play. And then Neeb puts down a Robo. That's going to be to get Immortals to deal with the Roaches. Oracle drops a Stasis Ward, forces the Drone Pull, and then two Adepts shade in for some Drone Kills. Four kills are not bad. Neeb showing decent efficiency so far. Oh, Scarlet just started making a ton of roaches. And a lair. Is she looking to defend here, or is she actually looking to set up a timing of her own? Because we have queens rallying to the front here. Neeb putting down the I want to be safe at home before I leave shield battery at his third. And now his adept force is moving out. He's doing this without a warp prism. Queens are already beyond the creep highway. Oh, the army's actually cross paths in the center. Everybody's busted. Scarlet sees the adept timing. Neeb sees the queen walk. We could have a base race here. This could be very exciting. The adepts are gonna catch the ravagers hatching. That might not be good for them. Resonating Glaives is almost done, but it's not yet done. Protoss pulls back. He needs that to finish. Oh my God, I just said Neeb instead of need. I'm actually doing it for real now. Protoss puts a force together to see if he can catch the queens before they arrive at his doorstep. But that is backfiring. It's Scarlet who has the firepower here. Oh, the Adepts just get slaughtered. There will not be a base race. What there will be is Neeb fighting for his life. He's got to fight for home court now. He does have three more shield batteries set up now. But Scarlet's morphing more Ravagers. She's going to have a ton of vials here. Those forward shield batteries are all running off of a single pylon right now. Neeb is trying to rush out a second Immortal. He needs that bad. Just one of the many needs of Neeb. He's making four more shield batteries. That's definitely going to help. But can he make them faster than Scarlet can squash them? Both players are identical on workers, identical on economy. But it's Scarlet who has a much, much bigger army. She has the potential to seal this game right here. Neeb just keeps making batteries. He thinks he's a Tesla Gigafactory. Mass production. But are those batteries Duracell? Because they do not seem to be lasting. Here at Duracell, we test our batteries under the harshest of conditions. And that, of course, includes giant alien bugs dropping corrosive vials from the sky. Duracell, last longest, except on Jaganatha. While I'm cracking jokes, Neeb is slowly getting his supply up. I thought he was done for, but he is defending this. Scarlet attacked two bases at once, and her queens are now getting depleted. Neeb's bringing out the force behind his wall at the natural. Where are the reinforcements? They're kind of trickling in and getting killed as a result. Scarlet is making a ton of units though, but she's also now put down a fourth base. She might be thinking about transitioning. She's cleared out Neeb's third, but she hasn't actually killed the next one. Neeb's about to get a third immortal. That's gonna make life difficult for the Zerg, but not if Scarlet reduces the immortal count, and that's exactly what she does. Immortal number three just becomes a replacement immortal. But maybe it's enough. Scarlet is pulling back. I don't think she's giving up, though. She's making a slew of units. She's not droning. Is she pretending to be routed here? She just wants a ramp? It feels like Zerg was on the precipice of victory, but unable to close it out. Ah, uh, here comes the next wave. Instead of trickling it in, Scarlet is grouping it together. If Neeb thinks the attack is over, he could make a mistake. Yeah, he put his money into probes in a forge. He didn't want to do that. Scarlet may have snookered him here. Zerg comes storming back with so many Ravagers. Scarlet's APM shoots over 900. He pulls his probes. It's a desperation gamut. They're just gonna die. But if he doesn't survive the next 10 seconds, he could lose the game anyway. Oh, the immortal count drops to one. Scarlet can taste it. Zerg can extend this series one more game. 
But me, warping in stalkers, he's making it interesting. Zerglings get on the last immortal, it's gone. And suddenly Protoss has a base without an army. He retreats behind his mineral line. He can use a recall, but there's not a lot of units to save. No, it's GG, he concedes, we're going to the next game. We will be seeing a game six. Another chance for Neeb to win it all, but also a chance for Scarlet to tie it up. Okay, so in my view, we've got to at least partially credit Scarlet's win here to some luck as to how the player's builds matched out. First, let's look at what Neeb was doing. It was pretty cool. He was trying, very hard, to disguise a resonating glaive timing. First, as I said earlier in this cast, hatch blocking is very useful for a player trying to attack with adepts. It helps to leverage the adept's ability to shade between bases. So what does Neeb do? He very purposefully doesn't hatch block, letting Scarlet take her natural. This increases the chance that she won't suspect a glaive timing. Then he shrewdly copies his opening build from the prior three games, getting a Stargate, letting Scarlet's Overlord scout it, even going so far as to show her the Void Ray and the Oracle to really sell it. All the while, what he really wants to do is make a ton of adepts, show up on her doorstep, and clear out her drones with that heightened attack speed. Bad luck for Neeb. Scarlet decided to go queen walking, heavy on roaches and ravagers. I could easily be wrong, but I don't think she actually guessed what Neeb was up to. I think she just had her own game plan, and it happened to match up very well. My explanation for her choice is Scarlet is reluctant to go late game against Neeb. He's looking like a beast in late game with a composition that is so hard to deal with, even in the best of times. We've seen Scarlet take that Protoss 3D death ball down before, but when it's Neeb, it's even that much harder. In this case, the decision to go for an early push worked out great for her because the player's two attack plans wound up having the same timing and they both met in the middle. Terrible for Neeb. Adepts are great at shading between bases, threatening drones, forcing the Zerg to split its forces and spend its time rushing back and forth instead of attacking. They are not great in a stand-up fight against armored roaches and queens that do not have the light trait to permit the adepts to do that extra damage. The adepts might be okay if they stayed home back by shield batteries and Sim City chokes. Not ideal but still better than out in the center of the map where Scarlet could just crush them with a roach concave. I don't want to oversell it, but the Ravagers even got a brief engagement against the Adepts before Resonating Glaives was even done. Neeb's plan to hide his Adepts meant they came out slightly later than usual, and in this case, because of what Scarlet had in mind, slightly late turned out to just be plain ordinary too late. Just like in Game 2, Neeb didn't have the Void Rays to hold off the Zerg push. And result? Scarlet lives to fight another day. Adjutant, if you would please! The game begins now. We are on Blackburn. And immediately, I've got a concern here. I'm on the record for saying this is a terrific map for Terran vs. Zerg games, but not for the other matches. This is PvZ, and it doesn't usually yield the greatest of games. But the good news is, my rongo meter has been exceptionally high this tournament so far. So by that metric, this might turn out to be the best game yet. Neeb is hatch blocking again, by the way. After that unsuccessful game four, he's back to normal. And we shouldn't be surprised, this is a pivotal game. He either wins, or his back is against the wall in a winner-take-all rubber match. Consider that hatch blocked. Scarlet has nowhere near her 300 minerals. Her drone streaks out for the lateral third. Is it a fake or is it real? She hits 300 minerals, it's real. Hatch down. Neeb's probe, though, is gonna camp out a while before he finally believes it. Gateway is down, as is that initial assimilator. This is going to be our first map in this series that actually works in gold minerals. They can really impact the game. We'll see who goes for them. Perhaps even our Protoss player in the bottom left as he reverses things and thinks backwards and reflects on all the games and where he's been. 
Hey, it's game five. I'm not just reaching anymore. I'm using like prosthetic cybernetic limbs to reach across the hall here. Neve is sticking with his nexus core. It truly is a thing of beauty. And speaking of things that are timeless, that takes me to our Zerg player in the bottom room, which calls to mind one of the most formative pieces of literature of the 1800s, the famed historical romance novel, Scarlet! The reach continues, but the pool's gonna pop. I finally clued in that Scarlet's made some kind of subtle change so her pool completes before her hatch. Just slightly. It's two queens, two lings. Switching over to Protoss, we're gonna see that core complete. Two to one odds that he's gonna go Stargate for the fifth time in a row. But first we'll get that Chrono boosted adept, yes? Yes? No! Need prioritize the Stargate over his Workgate research and over the adept. It's a tiny, tiny change, but I think he's trying to rush something out here. Remember, the rush distance by air on this map is very small. The red deceleration zones are supposed to mitigate that, but do they really? Neeb's first adept is coming out, but as we've seen, he doesn't really use it. He keeps it back just to make sure Scarlet isn't sneaking lings into his base. He won't send it out until he gets a second defensive adept ready to guard the door. He's prioritizing defense over offense and scouting. Perhaps because he does not want to be scouted, he's going for a quick oracle. He's chrono boosting it out. Not a void ray first like in other games. Look at that rally point. Straight to the Zerg main. There's no way to sugarcoat it. This is a drone killing play meant to do damage. And it has a strong potential to hit before any spores are made. Meanwhile, Ling speed is almost done. The initial adept has made her way across the map. Lings are going to pick up the shade. I don't expect it to complete. It doesn't. Scarlet's third base at her natural is halfway done, by the way. Oracle's out. Void Ray's going to follow it from that Stargate. Yeah, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump over to the Zerg base. The deceleration zones give it a brief reflective pause, but that's about it. There's only a single queen to defend, and that means if Neve wants to trade his shields for drones, there's nothing Scarlet can do to stop him. Neve gets four drone kills and he saves his oracle. He's got to be happy with that. Neve may not be done either. He's headed for the lateral third base location. This time Scarlet will be ready. Spore is not done though. Pulsar beams are active and Neve picks up four more kills and gets away. Neve has to be happy with that opening. Look at the applause coming from those warp gates. Clearly they approve. And it looks like Neve will celebrate by putting down a third nexus. Notice that Void Ray's been denied an Overlord kill. Scarlet never sent one over to scout. Oh, Ling pick up here. Scarlet tries to get some revenge with the door challenge. She trades two Lings for two Adepts. Oh, make that three. Still a good bargain. In the meantime, she's going to go ahead and make nine drones. She's got to make up for a few losses. Neeb is teching. He's going to start up that all-important robotics facility. Back in June of 1962, I saw this guy try to play without a robo. Didn't go so well for him. Neve's oracles are still finding value. The periodic casting of revelations is a time-honored way to scout. Scarlet starts up that roach war and our players are dead even on supply here. Scarlet's actually adding more spores. In a way, you could say that's more value out of those oracles. As best we can see, Neeb isn't actually producing any more air units. He's just doing an amazing job of leveraging what he's got. Scarlet's ahead on minerals, Neeb's ahead on gas. And now Scarlet's gonna start up her lair. Oh, the oracles are taking a bow. They're obviously very impressed with themselves. Neeb pushing out with his adepts here. The Roach Warren's not yet done, so the adepts are still pretty viable. And while he's doing this, his Twilight is gonna come back online at home. Scarlet is forced to make Lings as a short-term emergency solution. The queens come up to meet the adepts, but it's the shade that needs to be tracked. Oh, I think this is the real deal. No! Need totally faked me out. I thought he was looking to trade there. Meanwhile, the adepts are going to try and sneak inside. They're going to get another tag. And Need will see that he doesn't have long before the lair completes. Oh, Scarlet catches the adepts standing around just outside the creep. She's going to be able to get a bunch of kills here. Or she would have if she didn't have to chase that shade. This time I call fake. Hey, I'm one for two. But while I'm having fun here, Scarlet's actually taking the gold base. 
Neeb is not aware just yet, and that definitely falls under the category of things he needs to know. With his two oracles combing the map, he should figure it out pretty quick. A gateway explosion for Protoss with a battle duck. Roach speed for Scarlet. Maybe we'll even see a roach to go with it. But for now, she is still playing the economic game, seeing how far she can get on just queens and lings. There we go. As soon as I call her on it, she makes seven roaches. She has stopped droning at 77. Neeb is bringing his gateway count up to eight. His oracles are going to see the gold, but it's already just about done. For her part, Scarlet's going to get a ling scout on the third. Meanwhile, the charge lot upgrade's gonna finish together at the same time as plus one. Neeb's gonna have himself a timing. The problem is it's gonna be the same time that Roach Speed finishes for Scarlet. Zerg is gonna be behind on the numeric upgrades though. Maybe that gives Neeb a window to work with. The problem is Scarlet's supply is exploding now. Building roaches is like wearing horizontal stripes. They make you look fat. Neeb taking his fourth in the top left. Clearly Neeb does not have the Olympic spirit because he is not going for the gold. Saving that gold base for later. Scarlet loaded up on Ravagers now. All of a sudden she is looking scary. And with that gold base she's totally outmining Neeb. Just edging him out on gas, crushing him on minerals. And now she's going to try to wield that power offensively. Going for the base at the top left. There's a Void Ray there though. Scarlet does not have anything in the shoots up department, other than corrosive files, I suppose. But there's just too much there for one boy ray to kill, especially if it has to keep dodging those vials. Okay, here comes the cavalry in the form of Zealot Archon. But the base is already under fire. Scarlet backs off. She was probably just one volley away from dropping that Nexus. A bold decision by Neeb not to cancel, and it looks like it's going to pay off for him. I hate to pile on to my wrongometer, but this is shaping up to be a really cool game. Oh, Oracles with a Ravager kill. Those guys are boss. Those two units have been outperforming all games. Scarlet's Queens probably want to kill them so bad at this point. Why won't you die? Unable to shut down Neeb's fourth, Scarlet's going to start up a fifth in the top right. That way she'll continue to stay ahead on bases. Look at that income disparity. That is healthy for the Zerg player. And that money's getting dumped into a dozen mutas. Scarlet's gonna transition with a surprise air force. It's gonna be backed up by plus one air attack too. Oh, this hallucinated phoenix really needs to catch it. Scarlet's droning again, but I think that's just for spine crawlers. He's gonna want some cost-effective defense. Need researching storm. Oh, Ravagers get caught walking into the Immortals. Sentries cut off the retreat and Neeb gets himself some free kills. Neeb is getting his first warp prism. I think he's going to use that to start adding his Neeb lots on the scene. Mutas are ready. They are flocking up. Oh, bad luck for Neeb. The warp prism runs right into them. The mutas shred that paper airplane like it's an afterthought. But Scarlet is headed straight for the main. There's only a single cannon there. With that many mutas, it's nothing more than a speed bump. And Scarlet is about to max out just as she hits. Neeb's not even going to try to defend. He knows he's got the wrong composition. He's going to counter. OMG, game five is going to be a base race. Neeb's probes are all about to go to probe heaven. I've never been, but I think they get to warp stuff in on fluffy clouds. Neeblots hitting two bases at once. 31 dead probes, 19 dead drones. Scarlet goes for a hidden top center expansion. It's survival insurance because her buildings are about to get cleaned out. A base race is always a risky proposition for a Zerg player. They almost never have as many buildings as their opponents. There is a lot of red on that minimap, so the longer that top center base stays undiscovered, the better it is for Scarlet. Zerglings trying to slow down the Zealots, but they don't have the Talon power. Scarlet does not have adrenal glands. Mathematically, Protoss has twice as many buildings as the Zerg, but Scarlet is ripping things down a lot faster. The good news for Neeb, he found the top center. The bad news is it was his poor fleeing probes that made the discovery. He tries to recall, but he's only got four workers left. The Protoss economy is done. If he's gonna win, this is the army he's gonna do it with. Scarlet has a semblance of an economy, but she needs some tech structures to actually make new units. Ah, uh, the mutas fly across the map, take a timeout from building raising to kill some zealots. That could really pay off. The Zerg natural's been wiped out. 
Scarlet can't really win a straight up base race. She's either gonna have to defend her top center, defeat the Protoss army, or get to work on that Protoss main. But the Spire's back up. That means Zerg can start making mutas again, and she is. It's official, Neeb is supply block. But he wasn't making new units anyway. It's all about that top center base now. I don't see how Neeb can win this if he doesn't take it on. And with each passing second, the Zerg is only gonna get stronger. Oh, he's gonna try to see if he can crush the Zerg army. It's a tall order, but if he can succeed, Neeb's Archons are pretty critical. It's all he's got to deal with the Mutus. I mean, he's got a Phoenix, but that's not gonna cut it. Scarlet is beating the retreat back to her top center base. She's also taking Neeb's gold base. That's so cheeky. I love it. Neeb spotted it with his overseer, though. Somehow, Neeb's four probes are actually getting him a bank here. I hope those probes get a nice Christmas bonus. Neeb's reluctant to step on creep. He's gonna go after the gold. But while he's doing that, Scarlet is enriching her army. Oh, a storm on the mutas! The entire muta flock turns amber. These guys are keeping the game tight right to the end here. The gold hatch is going down. It's a golden horror pinata. That sounded dirty and upsetting. But Scarlet's making another hatch in the top right. If this turns into whack-a-mole, Neeb loses. Because while it's going on, Scarlet's building an army. Oh, Scarlet makes a play for Neeb's base. He's got a battery overcharge. Or he did. Oh, Scarlet knew what she was doing there. Neeb did not have enough. And now his main belongs to the Zerg. Good recognition by Neeb. As long as Scarlet's killing his main, she's not in the top center. That's his opportunity to attack. Scarlet evacuates. These are undefended buildings. Neeb, the comeback king, searching for ways to pull this out. Scarlet loses her spawning pool again. Her spire's about to come under threat. But meanwhile, Neeb's building total is crashing fast. It's a speed run laser light show. Neeb leaving a few units behind to clean up that base while he pushes over to Scarlet's top right. Both players less than a dozen buildings. And Neeb concedes! It's GG, we're going to game six. That's effectively game seven. That'll be the decider. This whole series is now gonna come down to one final game. Okay, so that base race was a total delight and obviously worthy of some significant analysis, but come on. We got to get to the last game. Let's just do it. Adjutant, if you would, please. The game begins now. Oh, bad news for Scarlet, good news for Neeb. By all accounts, Zergs do not enjoy playing on Beckett Industries. A small map with lots of chokes. Was that a drone cancel? That was a drone cancel. Scarlet is saving up minerals. She's gonna go pool first. Neeb needs to know this. If he's hatch blocking, that'll be good for him. He is, he puts down the pylon and he is already headed over. Now we just need to figure out if this is one of these modern defensive pool first builds or if this is a in your face, I'm killing you now pool first build. Neeb's second probe gonna look to put down his gateway. So this game did not take long to pick up. And it is gonna be for all the marbles. Oh, look at that. Is that drone pretending to be hatch block? Scarlet doesn't have the minerals. There's nothing for the drone to do at the triangular third. I think Scarlet's just trying to keep that probe there as long as possible. Or maybe she really is trying that double back maneuver we saw in game two. Neeb's probe's gonna go check. He's gonna see that spawning pool right as it's about to complete. Is Scarlet going for a pool or for lings? She goes for six lings. This is aggressive. Correction, she's also going for that hatch. Or is that a fake too? I'm not even sure. Neeb's probe comes back down to re-block the hatch. Okay, this time for realsies. But he's gotta know those lings are gonna pop out any second. He puts down a pylon. He's also walling up back home, adding that extra gateway. And that pylon's gonna delay those lings. Scarlet is more interested in getting her economy going than she is attacking Neeb. Hatch goes down. But there are Ling 7 and 8. Scarlet's gonna be at least a little bit aggressive. A little bit of a door challenge here. Whoa, she's pulled the drone. Speed run intro time. Our Protoss player is a guy called Neeb. Our Zerg player's going all in. She's a player named Scarlet. Neeb has his first zealot out. He's got a tight wall. 
He's putting in his cyber core for building number three. Scarlet's gonna try to tear the core down. There's a second zealot looking to come out. And here comes the extra firepower. Neve's gonna try to make a second layer to his wall. It's a drone drill on the cyber core. There has to be a first blood in there somewhere. And Neve puts down a shield battery. If that gets up, this will be very hard for Scarlet. Scarlet gets the first zealot, but there's an adept and a replacement zealot on the way. Cybercore in the yellow. Need needs that second layer. He doesn't have it. He needs the money. And he gets the second layer before the core goes down. He pulls his probes down to defend. Scarlet has zero economy, but neither does Neeb. Scarlet's in. It's a worker battle. Neeb's going to have a shield battery in there, though. And an adept. It's an unfair worker battle. Workers are dying everywhere, but I think Neeb's coming out on top. Yes, the drones are slaughtered. Neeb's going back to mine, and it's GG. And the series ends with a game that's absolutely loopy and nuts. I'm heartbroken and elated at the same time. Congratulations, Neeb. Wow. Okay, so I'm not a huge fan of drone pulls. The economic damage of crossing the map with all your workers is huge. And it lets the shield battery Protoss focus solely on defense. But I think it's fair to say Scarlet didn't wake up and say, Hey, if it's all tied up, I'm, I'm gonna drone drill in the final game. She knew she was on a disadvantageous map. And when her expansion plans got delayed, she decided she was too far behind. So she threw it all into a final gambit. And hey, it was nothing if not entertaining. I didn't think she would even get the wall down. That drone drill was awesome. But this wasn't Neeb's first cheese. He knew how to handle it and he handled it perfectly. So there you go. Congratulations to Neeb. He's our North American champion. He wins close to seven grand for that. Scarlet wins just under four grand. And like Neeb, she wins a chair in the DreamHack finals, although she wound up seated more disadvantageously. It remains pretty clear who the top North American players are. Estrella, in my view, a pretty clear third place. Still enjoy his game. Honorable mentions go to Nina and M. Canning. But as of today, still not convincingly in the same tier. To those of you who stuck with me through this, thank you. Don't forget to leave a comment and help keep the conversation going. What do you see as the strengths and weaknesses of Scarlet and Neeb? I don't know if I'll be doing more DreamHack, as I know the results of too many games. And probably you all do too. Let me scour the internet and see what cool stuff might be out there. From my base to yours, Zugs Wang out. To continue your StarCraft journey, Nova advises you to click the video in the upper rectangle. But Kerrigan warns you to watch your six and click the video in the bottom rectangle. Or you can stim pack your StarCraft experience. Subscribe to Zugs Wang StarCraft. Just hit the circle. From my base to yours, Zugs Wang out.